Here are the angle, sum, and difference identities we introduced and proved in the last video. Let's try them out. We'll use common angles we already know so we can anticipate the result and know that the identities work. I'll include an obtuse angle so you can see that these identities work for all angles. Let's find the cosine of pi over 6 plus 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 6, so this sum is 5 pi over 6, whose cosine we know is the negative large number, negative square root of 3 over 2. We'll use this identity and plug in the terms. Let's evaluate the trig functions one at a time. Cosine pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. Sine pi over 6 is 1 half, and we're subtracting this expression. Sine 2 pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. If you don't know these values, see TR-15. Multiplying and simplifying yields negative square root of 3 over 2, which is what we expected. Let's test these identities a different way. What happens if we let one of the angles be zero? Cosine of zero plus theta should be cosine theta, right? Let's see if the identities get it right. Here's the equation for cosine zero plus theta. Cosine zero equals one, so this left term is simply cosine theta. In the second term, sine zero equals zero, so the right term is zero, leaving us with cosine theta, which is what we expected. And here's the equation for sine 0 plus theta. The sine of 0 is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. The left term becomes 0, leaving us with sine theta, which is what we expected. Another exercise on the unit circle. Our common angles cover 15 degree increments all the way around the circle, except for these eight gaps. Let's use the angle sum and difference identities to find the cosine and sine of 15 degrees. We know from the circle symmetry that the two numbers we find will be the cosine and sine of all these other angles, though they can be in either order and positive or negative depending on the angle's quadrant. We'll consider 15 degrees to be 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, so we can use the angle difference identities with common angles whose sine and cosine we already know. By the way, 15 degrees is the same as pi over 12 radians, half of pi over 6. Here's the angle difference formula for cosine. It has four terms. Let's write them one at a time. Cosine 45 degrees, cosine 30 degrees, sine 45 degrees, sine 30 degrees. Multiply the sides. Square root of 6 over 4 plus square root of 2 over 4. Combine the denominator, and we get square root of 6 plus square root of 2 all over 4, and that's the cosine of 15 degrees. Here's the identity for sine. We have sine 45 degrees, cosine 30 degrees, cosine 45 degrees, and sine 30 degrees. Multiply across as before and simplify. Almost the same as cosine, except square root of 6 minus square root of 2, all over 4. So we've kind of supplemented our unit circle model, having large, medium, and small values for the cosine and sine of common angles. Theoretically, we now have this longer distance and this shorter distance for angles 15 degrees on either side of a quadrantal angle. I don't think you need to memorize these. I'm just showing you how they fit in and compare to large, medium, and small. Your instructor is probably not going to ask you to memorize the sum and difference identities. If you need to solve a problem on an exam, they'll probably give you the formula, but you should check with them. And of course, know how to use the identity formula. Let's work out one more problem that combines topics from previous videos. What's the cosine and sine of an angle that's the sum of theta 1 plus theta 2, given that theta 1 is a negative acute angle whose cosine is 0 
and theta 2 is an obtuse angle whose sine is 0 0.4805. To use the sum and difference identities, we don't really need to know the measure of the constituent angles, just their cosines and sines. So let's create a chart, filling in what we know and figuring out what we don't. When you use angle sum or difference identities, you're going to need the sine and cosine of both angles. We're given cosine theta 1, so what's the sine of theta 1? Sine theta 1 equals square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta 1. This is from TR-34. Solving, we get sine theta 1 equals negative 0 0.9389. We use the negative root because we're told the angle is negative acute, so the terminal side must be in quadrant 4 with a negative sign. The second angle, theta sub 2, is obtuse with a sign of 0 0.4805, so its cosine will be negative. Cosine theta sub 2 equals negative square root of 1 minus 0 0.4805 squared, which is negative 0 0.8770. So now, using the cosine identity, cosine theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2 equals cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2, minus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. Substituting our known numbers, we get 0 0.1493, which is cosine theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. Here's the identity for sine theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. Substituting our known values, we get 0 0.9888, which is sine theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. We can check our work using the Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared, theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2, plus sine squared, theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2, equals 1. In the next video, TR-40, we'll cover the double angle identities.